Hello, my name is Eric Anson, and I'm presenting a paper on determinants of e-learning adoption in universities, evidence from a developing country. This research paper is co-authored by Sheena Lovia Boatin, Richard Boatin, and then John Ifa. We are all from University of Ghana Business School, Accra, Ghana. So this presentation is going to take this form with the following outline. There's going to be an introduction, there will be a literature review, and then the research framework, the framework we used in conducting this research, and then the methodology, the method, and then the analysis of data, and then there will be a discussion, followed with a summary, conclusion, and then recommendation with references. So the introduction. E-learning is the new concept in educational delivery, the new concept in delivery of instructions between lecturers, between instructors, and then their students. So with the arrival of computer technology and the internet, the traditional mode of learning, the traditional mode of delivering instructions to students has evolved or has changed into a new form called electronic learning or e-learning. So e-learning is defined as instruction delivered on a digital device such as a computer, mobile device that is intended to support learning. So Tego, for instance, assessed that um, universities in developing countries have started adopting these electronic devices to support their teaching and learning. He also assessed that e-learning is yet to receive total adoption in the African context, including Ghana. So the review of literature indicated that e-learning is a concept which encompasses students, faculty, that is the lecturers or the instructors, and then the e-learning managers. The managers are the administrators behind these systems. But e-learning research papers indicated that, um, indicated that most research papers deal with only one or two of these stakeholders. On the other hand, for total adoption to occur, to study adoption holistically, you have to look at three major factors, and these are the technological factors, the organizational factors, and then the environmental factors. On the other hand, the research e-learning literature reviewed tend to look at determinants of e-learning adoption mostly from a single factor approach. That means the researchers tend to look at only the environmental factors or the organizational factors or the technological factors without putting these three things together to study e-learning holistically. And there's a need, so going forward, there's a need for research into practical ways of integrating e-learning into universities in developing countries from a holistic point of view by taking into consideration all the categories of factors that influence e-learning adoption from a multi-dimensional perspective. That is taking the three major stakeholders of the e-learning systems and then the three major factors of adoption. In light of that, our research principally tried to answer this question. What are the factors that determine the adoption of e-learning in universities in developing countries with a focus on Ghana and then University of Ghana? The next session is the literature review, how we reviewed literature. This literature review took three things into consideration. It was intended to find the determinants of e-learning adoptions in universities with a focus on studies on developing countries. And then again, the review focused on e-learning stakeholders' perspectives of researchers. That is, where researchers focused in conducting e-learning researches. And then conceptual approaches in e-learning research. The theories and the frameworks researchers used. So the first point, the, the papers were synthesized and then the adoption determinants were pulled out. So there, there are papers there, the theories, the papers used, the samples and then the adoption determinants. There are perceived usefulness, perceived ease of use, system quality perceived, and then a whole lot of other ones. So these propositions these factors are grouped into the three major determinants of e-learning adoption, or three major determinants of adoption. And these are the technology, organization, and environmental. So the technological factors, we found out that there was perceived ease of use, there was 
IT infrastructure, and then e-learning aspects. On the organizational factors too, it was discovered that um, organizational compatibility, expected benefits or perceived usefulness, size of the institution, and then the human and financial resources were also the organizational factors that influenced people to adopt e-learning systems. Environmental factors too, we found two factors, and these are educational factors and then competitive pressure. Above this, there was a, a fourth factor beyond the three factors, which are the technological, organizational, then, and then the environmental. There was a, a fourth factor, which was the nature of the course. And these factors were related to the courses themselves. These factors were neither technological, neither organizational, and neither nor environmental. So they were content of the course and then the e-learning curriculum. So the second aspect of our research, our literature review, that is the perspectives of e-learning literature. So e-learning literature review tends to focus mostly on a single stakeholder perspective. That is the student's perspective and these were the papers the students and then faculty combining to stakeholders, and then faculty and experts. But Pasico, Mansa, and Posey are arguably the only papers we discovered which combined the three stakeholders. And then the literature review focused on the conceptual approaches in e-learning researches. That is the theories and then the frameworks researchers used in conducting e-learning adoption researches. So there was the TAM, Technology Adoption Model, the Grounded Theory, DeLon and McLean Model, and then there was the TAM3, and then IS success model, and a few of the, these are the few of the prominent IS theories people use to conduct e-learning researches. Above this, there was the TOE framework, which looked at the three major factors of technology adoption. So that moves us to the next, the third topic, that is the research framework. So the TOE framework, which was proposed by Tonaski and Fletcher, was found to be the appropriate theory or framework in studying the adoption of e-learning from a very holistic point of view, because it includes the three major factors in e-learning adoption. Again, Tonaski and Fletcher framework consists of seemingly wider generic explanatory constructs. So the hypothesis for the technological context two hypotheses were expounded, and that is IT infrastructure has an influence on the adoption of e -learning. That is the hypothesis one. Hypothesis two, under the technological context, was perceived ease of use using the system influences the adoption of e-learning. For organizational context, hypothesis three was organizational compatibility influences adoption of e-learning. And then hypothesis four, expected benefits facilitate e-learning adoption in universities. So the environmental context, that is hypothesis five, competitive pressure influences e-learning adoption, and then hypothesis six, educational partners influence e-learning adoption. And then the fourth context, that is the nature of the course context, hypothesis seven, the content of the e-learning course influences e-learning adoption, and then hypothesis eight, that is the, the last hypothesis, the e-learning curriculum influences the nature of e-learning adoption. So for the methodology, this is how our research was done. By employing theories, that is the TOE framework, and then the hypothesis and questions to study the social phenomenon of alien adoption, the positivism paradigm was deemed fit to be used as a guiding lens. So this research was done using the positivism paradigm. The study was a survey research adopting the descriptive and explanatory survey design, and the questionnaires for the survey were designed based on the hypothesis established from the literature review in order to answer the research questions. So the population was individuals who use e-learning systems in University of Ghana. So a purposive sampling technique was adopted in the administration of the questionnaire. Thus, only people who engage in e-learning on the University of Ghana campus were contacted for this study. So a total of 450 sets of questionnaires were administered to individuals in the university whose activities employed the use of an e-learning system. So 300 
questionnaires were administered to students, 85 to lecturers or the instructors, and then 65 to the e-learning administrators, all in the University of Ghana. So this was how the data was analyzed. For the descriptive statistics, we had three, uh, 247 males and then 170 females. And that's a fair gender balance in this research. And then age-wise, 18 to 24, 25, 30, and then the others. We had to check for the reliability of the data we collected. So the reliability of each of the constructs was tested using the Cronbach's alpha. So Palant and Hare have suggested the use of the Cronbach's alpha coefficient, which is one of the common indicators for checking internal consistencies in the data we collected. And these authors proposed that the Cronbach's alpha coefficient should be greater than 0.7 for managerial decisions. However, a threshold of 0.6 is more acceptable in exploratory research. So for us, factors which were below 0.6 were dropped, and those which were above 0.6 were accepted. So for the IT infrastructure, which was the hypothesis one, a number of five items were selected, and these items had a Cronbach alpha of 0.605. Perceived use of use had five items with a Cronbach alpha of 0.731. So the following commonly used decisions rules were applied to identify the factors, a minimum of hygiene value of 1 and factor loadings for all the variables greater than 0.6, indicating good discriminant validity. The Kaiser mayon okine kmo test for sampling adequacy was 0.790, whilst the Bartlett test for spherity was 1067.035. Degree of freedom of 741. Next. So for the regression analysis, so a multiple regression was used to analyze the data. So the regression equation model, EA is e-learning adoption, so that is, and then the constant, that is K, and then ITI is IT infrastructure, then PEU, perceived use of use, and that is the regression equation model. So discussion of results, based on the multiple regression analysis using the regression model. For the technological context, the two factors we used for the hypothesis, that is the IT infrastructure and the perceived use of use, were both statistically significant, with p-values which were less than 0.05. So IT infrastructure was seen to have a significant impact on the adoption of e and this is in uniform to extant studies. So we had similar studies which also had IT infrastructure to be significant in e-learning adoption. So these prior studies emphasize the importance of the IT infrastructure of universities in promoting the adoption of e-learning systems. Perceived ease of use was also seen to be significant predictor of the adoption of e-learning in this study. For organizational context, organizational compatibility also had a significant influence on e-learning adoption. And this was also supported by studies in literature. On the other hand, organizational compatibility had an inverse relationship with e-learning adoption. And this implies that a more complex organizational compatibility will lead to e-learning being less adopted. And this is also supported by Rauf, Nassar, and then Jassim. That is, the rate of e-learning adoption becomes less when the organization is more complex and vice versa. Perceived benefits, which is also an organizational context factor, was also statistically significant to e-learning adoption. Environmental context to the two factors under environmental context, that is educational partners and competitive pressure, all, were all both statistically significant and hence influenced e-learning adoption. Now the fourth factor, that is the nature of the course. So for the nature of the course, the content of the course and then the e-learning curriculum were also both statistically significant. So in summary, this study investigated the adoption of e-learning within a university in a developing country, specifically the determin determinants of e-learning adoption. 
a multiple regression was chosen among other techniques to test and validate the hypothesis proposed in relation to the eight factors and the dependent variable. The test indicated that all eight factors were statistically significant to e adoption, thus their p-values were less than 0.05. So our e-learning adoption model for the technological context, we have perceived ease of use, IT infrastructure, and organizational context too. We have organizational compatibility and expected benefits. For environmental context, there is educational partners, competitive pressure, and the nature of the course. We have content of the course and e-learning curriculum. And these factors influence somebody to adopt e-learning course. So the study provides empirical support for the assertion that adoption of e-learning can also be studied from a multi-dimensional -pers multi perspective, that is, from the technological, organizational, environmental context, with even an addition of a fourth factor, that is the nature of the course. And this therefore provides generalizability power for the factors that determine e-learning adoption in higher learning institutions. Again, the study bridges the ostensible literature gap by providing a multifaceted perspective, that is, combining the three stakeholders in using e-learning systems in developing countries. On the other hand, the results of the quantitative study might not be applicable in qualitative studies. Therefore, it is proposed, it is recommended that future studies should try to use a qualitative study a qualitative perspective which will provide more generalizability to the findings as postulated by Eze et al. Again, the study was limited to the University of Ghana, hence making it difficult to generalize the findings to other developing countries. So as such, as such future studies should include other universities and even try to compare and com contrast using different universities, data from different universities. Again, further studies could also consider researching into mobile-enabled learning, that is M-learning, and then e-learning in cloud computing since they are emerging trends in the educational sector. For the references, so these were the references, a list of references used for this research. Thank you very much.